So the census is taken every 10 years, and obviously it's 2020. So there's going to be some district redrawings as, you know, the population is counted and everything. And there is actually really good odds that AOC's district definitely won't stay the same, but it might just be taken out completely at this point. So uh, this is interesting because... There's a lowering of uh, population and her, I guess, district is, you know, very immigrant heavy. And so it's going to make, they're trying to, you know, remove uh, that. And New York is set to lose a district. And so it's probably going to be hers. Uh, now, this is her back in February. So I want to play this for you guys. Um, we, of course, in 2020, the whole country will be experiencing another census and so around 2022 23 there'll be another redistricting a uh, new york passed for the first time a, a non-partisan or an objective uh, redistricting committee and so this will be our first census going through that i don't know if that means that all of our districts are going to be redrawn dramatically because they have been historically gerrymandered or what will happen, but there's certainly a possibility that, um, I mean, if not a guarantee, that my district in the coming years will not look like my district today. So um, so I think it's, it's entirely possible, and New York politics being what it is, yeah. um, we have no idea where, where Do, things could go. Is New York expected to gain a seat or lose a seat, rather? We are, uh, you know, folks think that we're going to lose a seat, even though our city has been growing at a very strong pace. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we've been fighting the, the 2020 census question. And between the federal government really looking to fund the census at a much lower rate, uh, communities like mine are the ones that are essentially targeted by by the current administration. Communities that are poor, more working class, communities that are diverse, communities that have high immigrant populations, whether they're documented or not. Um, it's all, all the actions that the administration is taking is around uh, really dense urban areas losing congressional seats. Uh, I, I would think they wouldn't want to target you because then you might, there are other seats that you could yeah, run for. Yeah, we do have a very unique I have a unique situation in that our name ID is so strong that even when I won my primary in New York 14, we won like a third ballot, a third party primary in a different congressional district <laughs> on the same day. Um, that's also because the districts are drawn so closely together in an urban environment. You literally walk two blocks and you're in a different congressional right. district. So there were some people that maybe were, were canvassed on their way to work that they thought that I was running in their community two blocks down. Um, so that, you know, that's a that's a possibility and maybe some other people wouldn't want trouble for themselves. But again, if it's if it's uh, if it's a partisan if it, or if it's, you know, not as objective as they say it is, that's one consideration. But even if it is objective and they redraw the districts to be a square somewhere else, um, that could also create an issue. So this you is talk. this is going to be very interesting. Um, because obviously, as you just saw, their hair, hair district could just be gone because New York is set to lose one. And as you guys know, you know, the New York New York politics are some of the most corrupt politics in the game ever since the days of William Boss Tweed, obviously. So super corrupt. We just saw what happened to Tiffany Caban. She got cheated out of her election against Melinda Katz. And the, the New York Democratic neoliberal machine is massive. And... Recall that AOC had explained that, you know, in these state assemblies, they're like these lines of people who are waiting for their turn to get the House seat. That's what's happening in California 25, where Cenk Uger is running, because uh, Christy Smith is like the next in line, right? So she's going to step up after Katie Hill. And Cenk's like, no, I'm running in this race. Um, I'm not, you know, this hand-picked monarchical, you know, fucking candidate. So... Uh, the way that it explains this is very interesting. So it says, In 2014, New York approved a constitutional amendment establishing a nonpartisan redistricting commission, which is set to take over the redistricting process starting in 2020. The 10-member commission, meant to be independent from the legislature, is made up of individuals selected by leaders from the state, senate, and assembly, and the original eight members pick two additional members. So, remember, the state, senate, and assembly are filled with people 
who are part of the New York Democratic neoliberal corporate machine, okay? So they're the ones choosing, uh, you know, uh, what's going on, right? The, or the people on the commission. So those people on the commission are probably going to be people who are, you know, basically uh, falling in line with the ideology and the goals of that, you know, 10-member commission, which is filled with people who are appointed by the state senate and the as state assembly. And those are the people who don't like AOC. You know, she's the one who's sort of driving into um, the the political machine and essentially breaking it, right? So this is interesting. They're definitely going to try and take this one down. Now, what I'm curious about, and she mentions it there, uh, she'll probably maybe run for just the other seat, you know, another seat in, in New York, uh, the one that's closest to her. Um, you know, or she could run for Senate. I believe Chuck Schumer's up in 2022, I believe it is. So, you know, could she run for Senate? Um, I don't know. I mean, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. So she's old enough to run for Senate. So, you know, she'll be able to run in 2022. And I don't know how well she would perform. I'm not sure. What I do think is if she ran for a house seat, like she just said about her, you know, name ideas, she said, um, there'll probably be a district that includes some area that's pretty close to her. So she should be able to win regardless, honestly. I have a hard time believing that AOC could really lose a House seat, honestly. A Senate seat, okay. I could see her losing, possibly. But because you got to remember, man, the people in New York in general, the whole state, are uh, just a bunch of neoliberals, basically. Remember, Cynthia Nixon got, you know, she lost really badly to Andrew Cuomo. Uh, so... You know, there's not exactly smart voters over there, or progressive voters, but there's definitely a way that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez can get screwed over by both Trump and the GOP and the Democrats.